first of all, everyone, welcome to Sporting Global's first podcast. It's kind of like a big, big thing for us. And we're excited to have Amir here as our first guest. So how does it feel being our first podcast guest? Wow, for me, it's a great honor. Uh, I believe that this content is really, really important to the new generation to understand how to develop the new business besides sports. So for me, it's a really great, great honor from the last 20 years I'm working on it. So for me, I have 44 years old. So for me, it's really good to help youngsters like me at the beginning of my career to help them. Right. to reach their goals in professional skills and of course in professional behavior too because uh, I'm, I'm on it probably like you and Eduardo and all, all of them yeah. who works on sports with passion so for us for it's sure. more than earn money and develop our careers yeah. we like to work with with passion with our passion right no because we're passionate about it and and of course we're super glad to have you part of it and if you see like our video in this, we're kind of like, at least me, I'm sitting in my, my bedroom. That's what happens when it's a Corona time right now. Everyone is doing home office and we're just trying to make the best out of it. But we're, we're doing this podcast, guys, just because we want to provide you with like, as Amir said, like some great content to help you succeed. And a lot of you are maybe a little bit frustrated right now, like can't go to school, can't go to work. And they're like, what are we going to do, right? So we decided like, let's bring you like some key content about what is happening in the industry right now and how, especially how this, uh, you know, coronavirus uh, are impacting the sport business industry, because not only will it be a great knowledge asset for you, but you're better prepared for when the day comes, when you're going to get back into business, you're going to go back into school and you know where things are heading. So that's essentially where we're going to do with this podcast, alongside with, of course, other topics. We're going to invite industry experts and leaders like Amir uh, to talk about different topics. And again, Amir, why don't you just give a little bit like short background about yourself, what you're doing. You're working for Sports Value. What is Sports Value? And share a little bit about that. Great. Well, I, uh, I studied at, at the beginning of my university career a business administration BA degree. So right. I, I studied marketing, financials, and all of these stuff from, from business administration. And then I, I, I began to work with marketing. And then I believe that marketing is a really, really important for me. I believe that that's the most, the most important to my career. And at the middle of this process at the end of the university i discovered sports marketing sports management and i, uh, I understood in that moment that sports marketing and, uh, and and sports management will be my professional career so i decided to to quit a good job that uh, is, is a beginning of my career but it's in a big bank yeah. in marketing department and i quit this job my father will, wanted to kill me but i decided to go to barcelona to study in one year a master in sports marketing. So right. when I came back, I, I began in the beginning of 2000s uh, to work on it. At the beginning with sports marketing, in, in, at the middle uh, since 2005, uh, 2005 in general, I, I quit marketing and I, I go inside the strategic planning and sports management in, in effect. So from the last, 15 years I'm mixing my, my, my career between sports management projects, financial viability, business planning, right. with sports marketing, uh, branding, and sponsorship. So in two, two, two years ago, I decided to create my own firm, uh, Sports Value, right. who established these two big skills that I built in my career. Yep. One, in marketing skills and the other in the sports management skills. So I have clients so I can work on branding projects, com uh, promotional skill, right. uh, projects, and fun engagement. And in the other uh, other client is just financial vi viability and val uh, sports valuation, ass assess sports valuation yeah. and properties valuation. So uh, I, I can I can talk with CFO and CMOs like that. So right, sports right. value. 
believe that in the sports marketing we need to use financial numbers so monetize the right. strategy and in, in, in sports management projects we believe that we need to work more creative not just look to the numbers and just look to the people to the passion and to fun engagement to in the, the management of course to not just in marketing for sure and you have a nice mix of, of um, you know value that you're adding to your to your clients right there you know with like the marketing and, and all, of course the financial aspect too you know which is a huge part uh, which I think the Americans are appreciating a lot uh, there's yeah. a lot of <laughs> my friends and connections that are listening to this and I know they like to hear that. Um, so obviously, you know, if you haven't gotten already, today's topic will be Corona's impact, economic impact on the sport industry. Very heavy topic. But you, Amir, you have done a little bit of research on this. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what, what do you like? What is the research you have done? And why don't we, I think we need to just like go like a baseline here of like what does the economic market of the sport industry look like? Great. When I began to 20 years ago, I decided to use information to build projects. So, for example, I, I began my studies uh, with Deloitte, Pricewaterhouse, the big companies, uh, AT Curdy, who well, in that moment uh, they were publishing some important reports and of course Deloitte is the most important company in the right. world who works on football financials so for me it's a really important to tell this because I, 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 I didn't find this like uh, from space I, I believe that that's the most important thing we, we believe that we need some benchmarks to develop our project so okay. at the beginning I used some uh, balance sheet that data and of course at, at the middle of this I used some uh, Research from big uh, companies like in Brazil, we have a lot of big, big studies, public studies that, that you can use to develop some data. So at the, uh, at the end of these 20 years, I have the, the huge uh, uh, data from football clubs in Brazil, more than the other firms, more than Deloitte, more than KPMG and others. Yeah. So for me, it's really, really, I, I'm really glad that I, I'm helping the market. For example, my firm, Sports Value, and my name, Amir Somori, is really yeah. close to some, to some important things that I believe that to talk about football clubs management, good management, right. good practice, uh, corporate governance, and some guys in the football here don't like me. Great, that, that's good for me because sometimes it's good to, to believe that your job is so big in right. media vehicles and, and reach these guys. I, I, I quit this job, but from five years, I work on a big radio station here in a big newspaper uh, preparing content with these numbers and asking from the bad directors from the clubs right. what they think about it. So I have good, good penetration from the bad and the good <laughs> things. <laughs> but but well, that's, about that. that's okay. what happens, right? When, when you kind of like, you're, you're, you're tipping into the point of like, you know, digging deep into people's numbers, you know, and, yeah. and, Things, things will always come up with that, you know, and, and I mean, like business is hard, of course, like we, we both have like our own companies and, you know, especially yeah. in, in this time, business is hard. So when you're having people, of course, like with your knowledge, your expertise, I mean, like you're there to help them, right? But you're at the same time, like you're, you're not everyone is aware of where they are right now and like yeah, helping sure. them map that out. And, and that's all not always easy, you know, for everyone. So like you're always going to, you, you can't please everyone. That's for sure. Yeah, but at the end, uh, what I all, always explain from the people is that uh, in football, you can discuss everything. Right. But the bottom line, the financial bottom line from a balance sheet is impossible to discuss. So okay. my job is really, really secure in that point. <laughs> that's it. Well, about the coronavirus, it's really, really important to talk about this because uh, our, our our sports industry, our sports industry is really huge right now. Yeah, we, and the market is really really uh, globalized in terms of marketing communication and of course business right. environment. So at the end, we have a 800 billion big industry all over the world. Right, and, and this is just sports. If you use the concept of 
in, uh, induced, uh, induced in the different sectors from the economy, that's really normal to see how important is sport right. in this case to induce other sectors, uh, yeah. for example, Olympics or World Cup or a Premier League or, right. or, or which league that you want. If you analyze like uh, in uh, how they can induce other sectors, you can understand how important is sport in the economic overview. So this big, this big industry is concent concentrated right now in USA, right. more than $400 billion. And in Europe market. is incredible. And now in Europe, other $250 billion. So this is right. the big, huge markets. And China is the fast growing market. Because can't, China- can't forget about China. You know, they're, they're just racking up there. A lot has happened there in the last couple of years. You know, just the yeah. last decade. If you analyze NBA and Adidas, Nike, and other big companies, all of them is in looking opportunities to work on sports industry in China. And, right. and soccer, so football, for example, is the most important thing because right now we are talking about a, a, a big country who is de developing in, in, in scales how to, to be a football a football powerhouse all over the world. So yeah. that's the important thing. And China right now is a big sports industry of more than $150 billion. Right. And was projected that in five years it will be rich right $350 billion. Right. A lot of money. I don't believe with this situation. Yeah, it can, of course. We need to no. realize no, the hard, situation. You know? It's gonna be yeah. hard. But, but at the same time, I, I think it's what is quite interesting here, though, is that, and I mean, like, it's a little bit out of topic, but do you see the Chinese market and the Asian market become bigger than the U.S. market? Well, if you analyze, like, number of people, number of companies, number of teams, of course, in yeah. long-term view, that will happen. But the quality is important to analyze, 100%. for example. We need to understand that NFL, NBA, MLS, NHL, and other leagues will reach other 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 revenues when you, they are working on the digital world with streamings right. and delivery to the to the sponsors and fun engagement. So it's not easy to analyze uh, uh, just one market with right. without this d dynamic uh, situation of the other markets, but. Yeah. But if you look, for example, in the European football clubs powerhouse, all right. of them need all of them need to work on Asian market right. to right. earn money. U.S. market is not so yeah. developed. Uh, the, the soccer U.S. market is not so developed. So you need to work on, on where's the money is Middle East and Asia. So if you don't realize, for example, how important is cricket in India? or how important is rugby in, in Australia, and how you can reach this yeah. audience with my business, if I, I, if I am a sponsor, right, right. or if I am a, a football team, and for example, all European teams, uh, all of them have, have youth academies in Africa, in Asia, in all, over, all over the world, in, in Brazil, Paris Saint-Germain, for example, have a really big investment here, and Barcelona too. So you you, you need okay. to realize that the the world of sports is much complex than, for example, the other sectors. Because right. sports talk with entertainment market, uh, media market, and all of these transportation, food and beverage, um, uh, textile. So you have a lot of money besides the sport. For example, right. when one club receives from merchandise. Just a small part from this that sale went to the club, but the the big part, maybe eighty percent or ninety percent, is in the industry right. working with a, and taxes, of course, and corporate right. taxes. So we have a lot of things to talk about coronavirus. That is a, a really really problem, a big recession to sports okay. in short term view, in short term view, in the sports pro, of course, about uh, gate receipts and sponsorship deals because, uh, for example, the big deals from sponsors is, uh, uh, were signed in, in, a, in, a, in another situation. Yeah. 
the, 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 the pricing is completely different from six months ago wow. and right now. For example, Adidas uh, paid to Real Madrid $150 million a year. It's wow. incredible. It's a, it's a lot of money. Wow. 100, $150 million euros a year. And the same from Barcelona to Nike and other companies. How to monet, monetize this? So the ROI, the return on investment, needs to be uh, reorganized because we don't know exactly what kind of world we will you find in the... In the, in the September, for example, and probably yeah. everything would be normal. I don't know. And, but and that's, the, that's the scary part, right? Because there's a lot of agreements, deals, like business agreements from, from the leagues, for the teams that are being impacted by this coronavirus. And I, I, I think we just need to like just map out right now that like what is essentially happening in the sport industry. Because sports are being, like, first of all, uh, sports are being impacted, you know, globally. You know, it's it's in the U.S., it's in Europe, like Norway. Everyone is either canceling, like, their leagues or even delaying. So, you, you, we're talking about, like, Premier League has been delayed, but at the same time might be canceled. And, and everyone is already discussing if, like, should, should uh, Liverpool get, get, the, get the trophy or not. But UEFA is already on the table and say, like, if, if they cancel the league, Liverpool will not get the trophy. So there's a lot of money and big elements on stake for the team, for the leagues. And even, even within the regional league, which we're supposed to start like sometime in March now, in April, like they just, it might not even happen, you know, the season. They're just like, let's just hold on and just see where this thing is going. And, and that means a lot of loss of revenue for the Norwegian teams. And, and there's, there's not a lot of money and they're very dependent on local um, you know, contributors and, and investors to, to actually be able to fund, you know, what they're doing. Not everyone has like a solid financial benchmark, you know, especially in a small market like Norway. And how do you see, uh, like, what exactly if we map out like these kind of events being canceled, delay, what does it mean for the industry? And like from a financial point of view, what does, what does it mean? That's terrible in two, in two points of views. In, of course, in the, the direct revenues, for example, right. uh, if, you can, if, you, if you can share from the, 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 the people after my article showing okay. some match day revenues from the leagues, you can see, for example, in US, a deep problem because the leagues receive a lot of money from match day revenues. Right. And Premier League and, and La Liga and Bundesliga is the same. Uh, more than 500 million to Bundesliga is the small one, and more than two billion dollars to MLB, the biggest in the world in match day revenue. So it's a lot of money. Oh, but someone will tell us, no, but don't worry because they have, they receive a lot of money from broadcast rights and sponsorship deals. But wait, we, we, we the, the television wants to reorganize the right. schedule and probably this this post event that they need to show will receive some conditions, commercial conditions. So the teams at the end, because the league is just a company to manage the team's goals and the team's uh, interests. So at the end of this history, the teams will be suffered. So they are right. paying a lot of money to the big players in the world. Yep. For example, uh, just, to, just, just to mention, Barcelona is spending just to Messi 8 million euros a month. Right. Yeah, that's the number. It's not about... Uh, advertising and sponsorship deals to Messi. No, yeah. just in salary is the double that Juventus is paying to Cristiano Ronaldo. So just to understand how is the situation, I need to pay Messi, but I don't have the competition to to monetize this money. Right. So the, the, the situation is really bad. But the situation is not about just teams. Right. It's about the situation that in sports could impact and will impact in our economy. In our, in our account here in, in, in Sports Value, we believe that a, a big league like NFL, like Premier League, could work in a reality that one dollar created directly could reach 2.5 in indirect and 
um, induced effects in the economy. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm using the situation to explain. For example, if a, a football fan in Premier League spend 50 pounds in, in average to go to the, your matches, a lot of money, 50 pounds, but with transportation, food and beverage, and others spent, right. this, this money could reach 100 pounds just from this match. So we are talking a lot, uh, uh, the double, more than a double in impacts. And we are going to talk about, for example, tax impacts. So to the government, is so suffered because the government must use money to give credit, to give sit, uh, the situation to the companies. But right. in this moment, they, they, are, they are looking to see the bad, the, the, the worst moment in your life in tax generation. No, for sure. And, and I mean, like, we haven't even talked about the major competitions like the Euros, uh, you know, the Olympics. It, it's, it's something might even happen there. The Euros is already delayed, delayed to 2021. And you're talking about obviously the financial impact of like, uh, you know, even the production impact, all the different value chains that are in part of it, of the logistics supply chain that are being impacted by it. I even saw like the story of like the CBS Sports um, where, where they essentially have to permit like the majority of their staff, right? Because there's no sports on the, on the, on the news anymore, right? Everything is, everything is shut down more or less. And, and it impacts so much more than just, as you said, uh, you know, the team itself, you know, it's the stadium operation, it's the sponsorships, the, the, the media, you know, all entities that are involved in the sports are being impacted by it. But I think we also got to look at the, like, where, where essentially do we go from here? How, how can we turn this around? And how can the sport industry, you know, uh, like, like how can sport industry get back on track? What, what, can, what can we do to help, essentially? Maybe not you and me, but who, who can help, you know, in order to get the sport industry back on track so it doesn't hurt as much as is probably going to happen? In my opinion, of course, it's not a war, a global war, but it's a war in health situation that we believe that is a pandemic situation. So well, in, in, in moments of war or, or disasters like that, we need to work on drastic situations. So for, for example, I have some numbers just to understand how important is the Olympics. For example, in, in general, more than 500,000 foreign tourists visit a country. For example, in, in London, 12 was 600,000. So you can imagine how much money this kind of people put in the economy. So in terms of, of oh, let's close the doors and just do, do the Olympics. It's impossible because all the business model depends on it. So for example, this economy induced effect that I, I believe this is one to 2.5, the maximum. Right. You, can, you, can, you can believe that that's, that's the point in the Olympics, for example, that you have more people outside the venues because you have domestic, uh, domestic tourists too, so you don't have the ticket, but you go there to see right. the athlete, to, to feel the environment. So, be part of it, you know? yeah. so you need to understand that the reality. So Euro is the same thing. The Euro, Co Euro Cup is the same. The selection is the same. So 2021 is another situation. Probably you, you have uh, control to, to in next one year. I don't know, but right. probably we, we need to, to amend it from the sports industry because at, at the end, you don't need to, to develop your decisions right now just to, res to solve three months. You need right. to solve four years because from the, the, the Olympic cycle is, fun, is the, main, the, the main situation is how to work on it because in, in, right. in, in economic, the economic issue, you can work on it. Like we are, we are discussing here, right, right. the best way to do. But in a sports situation, is how is the athlete to 2021? Because right. the athlete is working from the cycle, the cycle to end the cycle and to win the medals. And right. then they need to extend to 2021. So the sports effect yeah. is important, yeah. not just about the Olympics, from That's about all, all athletes all over the world. Yes, especially with the Olymp Olympic athletes, right? That, that worked in the, these four, four, two years kind of like models and they just build their way up to being at the highest point 
when the Olympics reach. So that's a, actually a very good point, which I haven't even thought about. And, and, and I think like the Olympics, which I hope we're going to discuss on our next episode or in the, in the very near future, we're going to discuss like how that's impacting. Uh, sure. And it's a very interesting case because there's so much going on there. And I think everyone is just sitting on their toes and just like, what is going to happen here? Um, but, but just to wrap it up here, we're starting to like run out of, a, run out of time, but to, to wrap it up, like what, like as far as like just looking at Norway, um, obviously, as I told you, Norway is a very grassroots, you know, uh, market, uh, depending on grassroots volunteering. And there's, there's not a lot of like, you know, professional and a lot of money involved in the industry. Of course, like small country, right? Five, 5.5 million people. But what we have is obviously a strong government that are helping out uh, with, with funding, even for s- small businesses. So I'm, I'm very glad for this. But, but they're, they're decided to help with direct funding into the, into the professional sport industry in order to help, you know, make sure that they don't lose as much money. Because even we talked about, um, I, I just saw in the news that the, the, the Norwegian Ski Federation here, uh, which obviously, you know, we're, we're one of the, the best in the world in skis. And there were supposed to be major events that we could earn a lot of money from. But since those events are canceled, they lost like 25, 27 million, you know, Norwegian kroners, which is, you know, the 2.7 million euros. And there's a lot of money for them, you know. And, and you had some answers around like, like from Monica and in your research, like where, like how exactly can the government and, and other enti- entities help, help the sport industry in the position where they are right now? Yeah, that's a good question, because if you look in the short-term view, we need to understand that this is surviving from the people and the companies. When you look to sport, of course, these clubs, these small clubs without money, uh, here in Brazil, we are talking about these right now, because we have a lot of small clubs, we don't have money to survive without the competition. So, probably the state federations, the sports federations, could use some emergency money to help them to establish the cash flow. Maybe right. it's a right. short-term sol- solution. But in general, the government could help. And what I believe that the most important thing right now is to maintain the contracts. Yep. Bring yep. the broadcast writers, bring sponsors, and talk with them and explain that you are going to work in a digital overview. I will go to, to good, a good example for me in my professional life. And next Monday, I, I, I would go to Barcelona to a, to a sport congress in the end of the last, next week. And that's yeah. close, that's finished. So we need to wait from the May, maybe the, the yeah. congress will establish that. But the organizers decided to work on digital platform to talk with the people all over the world. So right now, I will reach more people in the digital structure right. that they they, right. they 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 build then if i go take a plan go to barcelona to talk with 400 people for example yeah. so it bring into our business model we need to give to sponsors we need to give to broadcasters opportunities to to reach the people that they are, they are close in their, their homes all the time connected, for example, in, in Scandinavian countries, I visit Denmark, for example, probably similar to Norway and yeah. Sweden too. The people have a really good penetration, internet penetration in their homes. Yeah, so yeah. They, they, they can establish, for example, we don't have matches, but let's go to talk with the players. Right. Let's talk to talk with the, the manager. Let's talk to talk with the, the directors. Right. And the sponsors can put their brands in this situation. And of course, it's the same. No, it's the same audience. No, it's the same. It's the same values. No, but it's a short-term right. resolution. But in long term, I believe that we are going to lose. We are going to lose money. It's right. impossible yeah, to well, balance yeah. this with without losses. Right. It's impossible. And, and I think, like you know, just just to wrap it up. Um, you know, I, I think you know, at the end, people have to think differently they have to think outside the box and and look at digital solutions we're, we're we're so fortunate that we have the digital solutions right now which is why we do the podcast which is why we're making the events online 
And I, I mean, like, you know, this is where we have to think. We got to look at the bright side. Um, you essentially just have to make the most out of the opportunity that is giving out to you. So with that, Amir, I would like to thank you uh, for the time. I truly appreciate it. We could probably go talking about this for like several hours and hours and hours. But, you know, let, let's, let's just specify it in, in more talks in the future. We have the great conversation, uh, a lot of interesting topics that I hope you guys at home, uh, wherever you're listening to this, uh, will enjoy. Amir, I would like to thank you for the time. Uh, your knowledge expertise has been amazing in this this topic. We truly appreciate it. And if you want to check out more, you know, from the research itself, we'll 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 put the link to the research, uh, you know, wherever we are in the in the social media world, uh, so you guys can see that and understand more. So I don't know, Amir, if you have any final remarks, but I would like to thank you for the time once again. Thank you all from the invitation from me is an honor, like I told at the beginning. And what I can tell, well, let's wait some weeks to understand the, the damage because the damage is really hard to our economy. It's not about sport, it's about all over the world. We are going to suffer the stock market, the real market, the, yeah. the supermarket, all of them we are going to suffer. But why I, I believe that the digital world that we are living right now, of course, is not the, the revolution. The revolution we we are live with the 5G, so we need to wait. But the 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 the, 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 the digital world could help us to connect people, to do business, to develop strategies, to deliver uh, different uh, actions to the clients in my case, or if you are an agency, or if you are a club. So you not you don't need to stop and say, let's wait the end right. of this situation, because the situation is is a recession that will hit your business. So you right. need to think outside the box. And the most important thing is to understand how to uh, neutralize the situation, because right. the damage is really, really huge. So we need to think, uh, how to develop the projects, to use the technologies, and to be calm. Because in general, we need to do sport, you need, you need to go to the university, you, you go to the party, you go to the dance. So you need, you need to, to, to think that is a moment to establish a new situation to our behavior, and to, to stay close to their family, or maybe in, in your, if you are friends, you can talk with them direct, directly, use the platforms to reach them. So that's the message in, at the end. And if you want, you can, you can talk after three weeks or one month, when you have the photography or the snapshot from what's going on all over the world. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, like, uh, once again, I appreciated uh, some really good tips and advice there. And, and I think the lesson is um, there will be a long term impact here, you know. So, um, of course, right now, like, deal with what you can in the most sufficient and easy, you know, way, but in a very smart approach. But also understand that, you know, five, six, seven months ahead, this will have an impact, right? So, hopefully, uh, you know, the virus itself is going to start fading out rather sooner than later uh, so we can start getting back on track and business and it doesn't hurt us as much but we are going to have to contribute in our part um, I, I think what i i will also say is that we're all in the same position you know we're everywhere where you are in the world we're, we're all in the same boat you know with this so everyone will be you know on the position of wanting to help each other and wanting to make this you know happen so we can go back to our normal stage and running the sport industry as as is as it is intended so with that i hope you enjoy wherever you are uh, in the world and listening i uh, appreciate that you're tuning in here and um and i hope you enjoyed it uh and with that amir thank you for the time and we always finish with